Good morning, and welcome back to Storytime with Joe. Today, I want to continue reading from the Children's Bible in 365 Stories. I want to read you an exciting story about a big lion and a man named Daniel. Should we get started? Great, let's go. The enemies of the Medes and Persians conquered Babylon, and King Darius, ruler of a vast empire, set up his headquarters in the city. Darius organized his empire well. He chose 120 governors to rule the many regions and put three supervisors over the governors to make sure that they remain loyal to the king. One of those three, you guessed it, was Daniel. The king soon found that Daniel was so much better than all the others that he planned to put him in complete charge. The governors and other supervisors, they were determined that he shouldn't do such a thing. They were bitterly jealous of Daniel and decided to find some way of getting him into the king's bad books. But however hard they tried, they could not catch Daniel doing anything wrong. Hmm, we shall have to find something about his Jewish religion that will get him into trouble, they decided. Although Daniel had lived in Babylon many years and had grown from a teenager into an old man, he had stayed true and loyal to God. Three times a day he went to his window and looked in the direction of Jerusalem, where the temple had stood. Then he knelt and prayed to the God who was with him, even though he was far from home. At last, the jealous officials came up with a scheme to get rid of Daniel. Your Majesty, they said to the king, we have drawn up a new law for you to pass. It states that anyone who wants anything at all during the next month must come ask for it from you alone. He must not make his request to any other person or God. Please sign this law with the seal of the Medes and Persians, for everyone knows that such a law may never be changed or broken. Anyone who disobeys your law shall be thrown into the pit of lions. Darius didn't realize that they were setting a trap for Daniel. He agreed and signed the law with his own royal seal. The governors and supervisors thought carefully when they drew up the law for the king to pass. They knew that Daniel prayed every day asking God for all that he needed. They would soon find him guilty. They knew too that the law of the Medes and Persians was binding. The king would not go back on his word. When Daniel heard about the new law, he guessed that they were plotting against him but he would not stop praying to God or even pretend to stop. He would rather die. He knelt by his open window as usual and prayed aloud to God. When his enemies saw him, they rubbed their hands in glee. Daniel had fallen into their trap. And so had the king. Your majesty, they said to Darius, do you remember that law you passed? Daniel is breaking it three times a day. They could scarcely hide their satisfaction. He makes requests to his God and defies your law. Too late, Darius realized that he had been tricked into condemning his best and well-loved minister to death. All that day, he tried to think of some way of saving Daniel. By evening, his officials were back. Your majesty knows that the law of the Medes and Persians cannot be broken, he reminded him. The king knew that he was caught in his own in their trap. Unwillingly, he gave orders for Daniel to be arrested and taken to the pit where the hungry lions were kept to make short work of troublesome criminals. The king himself went with Daniel. You have been loyal to your God, Daniel, he said. I hope he keeps you safe. Daniel was dropped down the narrow opening into the pit where the lean lions paced restlessly up and down in their enclosure. Then a large stone was put across the opening. The king returned to his palace with a heavy heart. He waved away the servants who ran forward to serve him. No food, he said, no music. Then he went to bed. All night he tossed and turned, unable to sleep. He knew that he had condemned to death a good and honest man who had served him well. 
as soon as the first pale light of dawn crept in the window of the royal bedroom, Darius sprang out of bed. He could bear the suspense no longer. He summoned his servants and was soon on his way to the lion pit. The huge stone was removed, and the king called down into the evil-smelling darkness. Daniel! Daniel! Servant of the living God! Was your God able to save you from the lions? With a thrill of relief, he heard Daniel's voice echoing from within the pit. Your majesty, God sent his angel to close the mouths of the lions so that they would not hurt me. He did so because I am innocent and have done your majesty no wrong. The king was overjoyed. Hurry, hurry, he ordered impatiently. Get ropes and pull Daniel out. They hauled Daniel up and looked at him hard. There was not even a scratch to be seen. Then the king's relief turned to anger against the men who tricked him and tried to murder Daniel. Throw those wicked conspirators to the lions, he commanded, and his order was quickly obeyed. That's the story of Daniel, a great follower of God, that even in difficult times, he kept praying to God. Thanks for listening to Daniel and the Lions. See you next week.